Hey everybody, what's up? It is your boy BQ with the Impact Lounge. This is a little something I'm going to be trying out from time to time, just to have fun with. I don't know how popular it's going to be on the channel, probably not very popular, but something I want to do for fun. And that's going to be taking a look back at matches from TNA 2016. Why 2016? This was a year that um, I connected with for some reason. It was the year I started podcasting. They debuted on Pop TV. Moved back to the Impact Zone in Orlando. You can see Velvet Sky takes a deep breath there. Her career is on the line. This is Velvet Sky versus Sienna. Um, I'll get back to that here in a second, but this was a year that I actually thought was pretty good. But they got no love whatsoever. None. Uh, they, they just had no momentum. Nothing, nothing hot going on. And they they did still have some stars on the roster, but the, just no momentum. And uh, for whatever reason, they just as an as underdogs, I just started really connect with what they were doing. And as I said, they debuted on Pop TV. The Knockouts division at the beginning of this year was bare bones. It was probably the worst Knockouts roster they've ever had. And that's when I started introducing Sienna, who you can see looks much different than she does now. Uh, they introduced Sienna. They brought Allie. They brought in Rosemary. They started r resurrecting that division that was not good. And at the time, the beautiful people was very watered down. It was a babyface faction. It was just her and Madison. Um, the dollhouse was super watered down because they didn't have Terran. They replaced her with Rebel. And one thing I will always complain about to this day with the Impact Zone tapings in Orlando was that the crowd had no clue. And I can tell you this because I've been in that crowd. No clue what the stipulations were in matches. No clue what the storylines were. Because so much happened backstage. And I can tell you with 100% certainty that no one here knew that Velvet Sky's career was on the line. So that's why they're not selling anything here. Now in real life, Velvet's contract was up. They were not a touring brand anymore. They were just on television. Uh, she had issues with management and just wasn't having fun anymore. So I think she tried her hand after leaving to see if WWE would pick her up. They didn't. So she retired shortly after that. And she's doing good with the allure right now, but she has remained retired and she's a manager. Sienna was the enforcer at this time for Maria Canellis Bennett. I don't remember what the beef was between Velvet and Maria, but she, uh, this was the episode Ali debuted on screen for the first time as the apprentice for Maria. And she let Velvet know that if she lost this match, that she was fired, that her career was over. Now, it's funny looking back at this impact zone, Orlando. You got a girl yawning there right behind Sienna. Um, you know, I, I never felt that the crowd was as tourist heavy as they would leave you, lead you to believe. You know, someone who's been in there felt like the a majority of the people are wrestling fans. But they were just so disconnected, so disinterested. And this was a really difficult year to watch on television because you're trying to enjoy what's going on in the ring. You got the fans just kind of resting their elbows on the uh, the rails, um, showing no enthusiasm, life, nothing, uh, on their phones, having side conversations. So it was, it was difficult to watch back then. And it sucked because I actually thought they were actually doing a pretty decent job. With, with the product, you know, I thought Billy Corgan was, was doing really good things. Um, Velvet Sky got a good net breaker in there. This was her one move of the match that looked good. <laughs> She's never, she was never strong in the ring. We know that about Velvet, but she was very popular. And that's where, you know, this crowd had no clue what was going on. And it's hard because they're in here trying to sell the stipulation. Uh, this one-handed bulldog is not good. They're in here trying to sell, sell the stipulation. And the crowd just doesn't even know what's going on. They think they're going to see Velvet Sky wrestle the next day. Um, but this was a transitioning time for the knockouts. As I said, you know, they kind of started getting away from the sexy characters and started getting back to some girls who could compete a little bit better. Number one stunner there doesn't hit. Kick to the stomach. Um, AK-47. And you can stick a fork in Velvet Sky. Bam. End of her career with TNA. And Sienna was pretty dominant back then. She had a early loss to Gail Kim that I never understood. But uh, with the exception after that, she was pretty dominant. 
And um, as I said, this the, the crowd has no clue about this guy's career is over. But um, thank God we're in a better place these days with the knockouts. Hope you enjoy this. Uh, I'll be doing it from time to time. And um, as I said, I don't expect it to be a super popular segment here on the channel, but uh, it, you know, I'm going to have some fun with it on Sundays and, and down days. Thanks for swinging by, folks. It's the Impact Lounge. Talk to you soon. Peace.